Public Works and Utilities is happy to provide this media briefing. This is part of our commitment to make sure that we do a better job of explaining to the public how we approach snow and ice events in our community and how our operations are centered on the nature and extent of the storm that we realize. In the media briefing, the information that you've received, you'll see a detail of recap of our staffing plans that we've used in preparation for this storm event. You'll have information on where we stand right now in terms of a forecast for operations and a forecast for road conditions. And obviously, as the storm event unfolds, we'll uh, see and adjust our strategy to the actual conditions that we experience. At this point, the weather forecast has Wichita and the Wichita area really on a cusp between an ice event primarily with some sleep and snow and a snow event. So it will be very important as this storm comes in to see how conditions actually unfold. We are prepared to uh, force the, we are prepared to uh, fight the snow and ice event with the resources that we normally have. We have crews currently operating on 12 hour shifts. We have them scheduled on call for the 12 hour shifts over the weekend and we'll be mobilizing those folks, bringing them in as appropriate once we see the timing and uh, location of the storm event. We've also provided a preliminary road forecast as to what conditions look like, but because of the uncertainties of this storm and the fact that, as we all know, every storm is different, we're going to monitor conditions closely and adjust our strategy as necessary as the snowstorm develops. Questions? Yesterday when we were talking, you said that the people who are working today will be on eight-hour shifts. I just, and I know when you were talking today, you just said 12-hour shifts. The, the people that, that worked overnight and into today were on eight-hour shifts. We will have staffing on the 12-hour shifts for the weekend. They are scheduled currently as on-call, and that allows us to bring them in when it's appropriate, depending on the actual timing of the event. But we anticipate that the weekend operations will be the 12-hour full shift, 50 trucks, 50 people per shift, 100 operators total to address the snow and ice conditions. Joe, what have you done so far? We began pre-treating of the snow emergency routes on Tuesday morning. Yesterday afternoon, we completed the primary snow emergency routes with brine pretreatment. Remember that the brine will help us to better attack the snow or ice as it comes down because the ability of that precipitation to bond to the pavement is reduced with the brine pretreatment. We are currently treating the secondary and school snow emergency routes. When we complete that later today, we'll go back and look at the primaries. We had a little bit of rain precipitation that uh, may have reduced the effectiveness of some of the brine. So we will rebrine and continue to brine as necessary until the onset of the actual winter event. How's your salt supply? We have 5,500 tons of salt sand mix in our storage facilities. We have a storage capacity of 6,000 tons, so we are very near to full. We are continuing to place and receive orders for salt and the salt sand mix. At this point, the salt sand does not uh, enter into an issue in terms of approaching this storm. So, Joe, in comparison to where we were before the last storm, we're in a much better position? Our salt sand inventory is much higher for this storm than it was for the last event. It's important to understand that how much salt sand and how much straight sand would actually be used for this upcoming event will depend on what type of precipitation we get, what order we get that precipitation in, and when it transitions between the different forms. How much of a challenge does this uncertainty and, and the broad range of wintry precipitation you much talk could receive, how, how does that uh, magnify the, the complexity of what your crews are going to be doing? 
The uncertainty is not a major impact for us. It certainly is a major impact operationally. It certainly is a major impact in trying to forecast what the road conditions are going to be like. But operationally, we bring all the forces that we have available for snow and ice to this event as we do with any emergency snow and ice operation. What we will do is we will adapt the actual practices that we're doing in terms of plowing or not plowing, salt sand or sand, depending on the actual conditions that we encounter as the storm evolves. So we'll make a continuous process of reviewing the conditions and ad adapting our response to meet those conditions. Is there any, I'm sorry, Stan, I was just going to say, um, because the last time it, there was a shorter supply of salt, so if we, we get the snow, then you will, you'll plow and then you'll put the salt sand mix down or just straight sand like last time? Or d it just depends? Every storm is different. We will have to see what we actually get in this storm. If we were to get a repeat of conditions that we experienced last time where we have a extremely high rate of snowfall and we're not able to plow it off the roadway before snowpack is formed, then we would anticipate that based on the forecasted temperature conditions, it might be necessary to go to our strategy of 100% sand because of the ineffectiveness of salt sand at low temperatures and with snowpack once it's created. Yeah, because it sounds like we're going to have a few days of really cool temperatures to follow up this storm again, just like last time. This time the forecasted conditions are for cold conditions. The good news is the duration of that cold does not look to be as long and at this point at least it appears we're going to have sunny conditions during the daylight hours. Sunlight and traffic are the greatest tools that we have in our arsenal to address breaking up snowpack and ice. Joe, does it help that the storm's coming in on a weekend when obviously there's less vehicles on the roadway and maybe you guys can get out and get it and stay on top of it? Without the uh, regular weekday commute cycle that we face as a community, the traffic patterns obviously will be different because of the weekend. If traffic is lighter, that makes our job easier because we can be more efficient, more effective in our treatment and response to the storm. Ready for spring? We're ready to do what we need to do to address this storm event. Oh, no. I, okay, good point though. <laughs> if, if we end up with a significant ice event, we are also prepared to, to adjust our treatment not only to deal with road conditions, but with the potential for ice on limbs and power lines creating power outages and the possible need to do work to clear roadways of uh, fallen trees. So we will, again, adopt our strategy to adjust our work to whatever conditions actually unfold. How much of a risk are forecasters telling you that there might be for ice accumulation on power lines and tree limbs? In the most recent forecast, the National Weather Service has reduced the expected ice accumulation for up to a quarter of an inch to about an eighth of an inch. So that's very encouraging in terms of reduced uh, forecast for ice. However, the National Weather Service indicates that we are right on the border between the part of the state that's expected to get a snow event and the part of the state that's expected to get ice with sleet and snow.